Welcome to part six, What Do I Do Next? of the Business Ownership Workshop Series that's sponsored by the Willow Creek Employment Services Team. My name is Mike Waller and I'm gonna be your facilitator for this session. So welcome aboard. Before we jump into part six, let me do a quick review of what we've covered up to this point in time in the previous five sessions. First session, we talked a little bit about what does ownership really look like and is it right for you? Second session, talked a little bit about different pathways, whether it would be a franchise, a business you start completely on your own, or potentially a business that you buy into. Third session, we covered some of the keys to success for establishing your business. Part four, we covered off the business plan, the importance of that. Part number five, we talked in detail about the importance of your marketing plan. So this session is gonna be a recap of what are the steps that you need to take in order to actually make your business a reality. First, it starts with motivation. It's the toughest thing sometimes to get energized to do the homework and the legwork necessary uh, to build your business plan, to do your research, so on and so forth. I share this little uh, picture with you just for the purpose of, uh, well, motivating you. Maybe it takes a bear chasing you down the road on your bicycle to really get you energized to do the work that's necessary, but you'll find that it's a just an incredibly important investment in your future. I wanna break this down as simply as I can for you into 10 different steps. Uh, you can kind of think of it as a checklist, if you will, of what you need to do to really get your business off of the ground. So let's start with step number one, doing your market research. This is critically important that you do your homework before you actually, well, Try to jump into making your business happen. Your market research is going to tell you if there's an opportunity for you to take your idea and truly turn it into a successful business or not. It's the way of gathering information about who are your potential customers or clients, who's the competition that's out there, what are the trend lines, does your business have legs to stand on. That's the whole importance of doing the market research. Step number two, write your business plan. No way to get around this. You need to do it because it is important for you to do all of the legwork necessary to create a plan around how you're going to launch and manage your business. And besides that, if you're gonna to try to get funding from any source, they're gonna ask you, where's your business plan? Let me read through it. Convince me that you've really got a great idea that I'm willing to invest some money in. Step number three, the funding of your business. This will depend obviously on what the nature of the business is and the size and the scope and the scalability of the business, but funding is gonna be important to you. You're gonna need some amount of working capital to get your business going. And that's the reason why you have to make sure that you can raise the money or have the money in order to get your business off the ground. And that's a part of what your business plan is going to tell you through the pro forma. Step number four, where's your business gonna be located? You're gonna operate it out of your basement, out of your garage. You're gonna have a brick and mortar location where you're going to rent space to perhaps buy a building. Uh, there are a variety of different choices. You wanna make sure that you have a good understanding of exactly where your business is going to be located. Choosing your legal structure. We spent quite a bit of time talking about this. This is incredibly important because it is the way in which you're gonna determine, well, how taxes are gonna be paid and how much tax is gonna be paid but at the same time, your legal structure puts a firewall between you and, well, potential disaster in the event of a lawsuit. That's the reason why I spent a lot of time talking about corporation, S-Corp, limited liability company, sole proprietorship, don't really recommend it, but this is something, again, you wanna to talk to a CPA and attorney about to ensure that you set up the proper legal structure that's going to ensure that you do pay the required taxes, but not more than that. And that you also have protection for your personal assets separate from your business. Step number six, the simple thing. What's the name of your business going to be? I can tell you that if you're gonna to try to name your business the Coca-Cola Consulting Services, you're probably gonna get a few letters from the Coca-Cola Attorney Group that is gonna say cease and desist. You wanna make sure that you have a name for your business that uh, can be defended. So you're gonna to wanna to do the right kind of research to ensure that 
your name is actually uh, available to you to use. Step number seven, registering your business. You have to register it with the state. And so that's a process by which you actually, again, set up your LLC or set up your corporation or your uh, escort. And that's the way in which you register your business in whatever state you're going to operate. Step number eight, get your federal and tax IDs. You're going to have to have a separate ID for your business that's going to be registered with the IRS. And likewise, depending on whether or not you're going to sell products in the state of Illinois, uh, you will have to have a state sales uh, tax ID also. So you want to make sure that you get all of those proper uh, IDs uh, for your business. Step number nine, applying for licenses and permits. My recommendation is always be above board. Don't try to do things, uh, uh, well, inappropriately. That is not going to have you properly licensed or permitted to do the particular kind of business. And this is a place where you're going to do your checking with your local authorities in the local village, the county, and the state in which you're going to do business. Step number 10, now you're ready to open up your business account. Once you have your business established, you can actually go to a bank and set up a separate checking account for your business. And potentially it can be attached to that, a merchant banking account, as well as potentially a credit card. And these are things that you're gonna do as the very last step because you're gonna to have to have all the information and the proper registrations where the bank will not let you set up a business in whatever the name of the business is that you have chosen. And then guess what? You're ready to open. Brick and mortar, you may have a big flashy grand opening. If it's a home-based business, well, you probably do something a little bit different. Whatever it is, it's gonna be your opening and you wanna make it special. There's a summary thought. I think it's important for you to clearly recognize what is the most important role that you will play in the business. These four different pillars here, if you will, represent the four key components that go into any kind of a business. Whatever the product and or, and or service is, how you're going to sell and market that particular product or service. Again, the finance side of your business, the funding, the capitalization, your finance strategy. And fourthly, your infrastructure and your IT. What are the ways in which you're going to manage the details of your business and maintain the data integrity as well as all the software management necessary to operate your business? Here's the bottom line. There is no important, more important role for you to play in your business than focusing on how do we get clients and or customers. No sales equals no business. As you've heard me say before, if you don't have a business that generates sales and makes profits for you, you have a nice little hobby for yourself, which could be a very expensive hobby. So just want to underline and, and not underestimate the importance of your role in the sales activity in the business. In support of that, I've recommended to you before a book called The E-Myth, which is uh, written by a fellow by the name of Michael Gerber. And he breaks it down this way and simply says, there's a difference between working in your business and working on your business. As an owner, Working in your business is doing the mechanics of your business. Most new businesses, all owners have some role in that. But you need to have a strategy that gets you out of that role of doing the actual business and working on the business if your ambitions are to scale your business. Working on the business simply means that you focus on the things that truly make a difference. Driving the sales engine, managing the operations of the business, and managing the finances of the business. That's what successful business owners do. So I encourage you to give consideration to picking up this book through the library or buying a copy of it on Amazon or any other book lender that you can find on the internet. And I think you'll find it a worthwhile read to help you to understand what makes for a successful business. If there's some way that we can help you through Willow Creek, I am more than happy to have a conversation with you. Don't hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll be more than happy to chat with you about whatever may be on your mind and try to be as helpful as I can in any way, shape or form. Well, that's it folks. I'm sure you recognize good old Bugs Bunny here. And it's been a delight to be able to share this with you this afternoon and hope that you will have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.